of that and what he says human beings we don't naturally discharge the freeze response we have these traumas where we're powerless and it's life-threatening and all this um, the trauma gets encoded in these echoes uh, animals won't create echoes because once they um, have the trauma when they come back around they'll have the freeze response they'll, they'll reproduce the last act as he said and they move through it. So in their mind, they've completed that event and it's all done. Our echoes are locked at that moment in time and space. Now, strangely enough, he says that caged animals, uh, animals in zoos, domesticated animals, um, they don't do the discharge of freeze response. So your animals will have echoes for those that work with animals. Okay. Um, humans don't discharge on the whole. Uh, indigenous tribes will naturally do that. You know, if you go into the Amazon or parts of Africa, if the, they have trauma, they would then go into the freeze discharge and they don't hold on to the trauma. But we do. We okay. Because we live in cages, and as he said, a cultural cage is our cage. Okay. Um, you see it in accidents. What happens when people have a, a car accident? They'll shake. And it's like, calm down, let's give you sedative. And actually, they're trying to discharge it. And probably the worst thing we can do is, is what we do do, is try to get people calm. Well, they should be okay. Go on, let it go. Let it go. Let go of all that. Uh, you know, move, move, uh, move through it. So um, when he heard this, yeah, absolutely crucial. And what I realised was, and what he said was, I was focusing on the fight and flight response all the time. But if you think of uh, fight, is the resolution there? If you'd have that guy'd have said that to you, and you'd have got into a fight with him, is the resolution? You've done something. You're not powerless. You know? You've done something. If you've just run away, you've, you're not powerless. You've done something. It's when you freeze and there's nothing you can do. That's when echoes are created and traumas encoded and you've got all this stuff going on. Um, what he said was crucial was his experience, because um, his main modality um, that he's worked with is uh, somalistic re-experiencing. So basically physical re-experiencing. But he said it takes a very, very experienced practitioner to be able to do this, and it's complicated and it takes a long time. Okay, we said with EFT, um, it's a lot quicker because we're releasing the, all the energy of it. But also um, by just moving through the trauma, releases it. You don't have to do the freeze response if you move through the trauma. So that became within matrix re-imprinting, what we do is, um, once we've released the trauma, we move through it, we do something different. We go to a safe place. We go to the beach, we go to the bedroom, we go to the park, we play in the garden, as you saw me doing with the people at the front. We do something different. We've moved through the trauma, and that sends a message to the body, especially when we bring it into the body, that it's over. So that's why that's absolutely crucial part of matrix reimprinting to show the body it's over. And you, the physiological feelings of when you did that, um, I don't know. So is it, um, 